Hey guys, Jim here. Welcome in once again. Today we're going to be taking a look at something quite a bit different from what I normally have in my collection, as well as something different from what I typically put in my videos. Uh, for one, it's a fixed blade, and regrettably I've not done enough fixed blade videos. My fixed blade collection has grown uh, quite a bit over the past two, two and a half years as I've become more and more interested in them. And this one stands alone as being the only integral built fixed blade that I've ever owned. Now I'm certain I'm going to have more in the future and this particular knife right here has inspired me uh, to make one myself at some point in the future so I don't think it'll be the last but it definitely is the first and right now the only. What we're looking at is the model 1601 from knife maker Kenneth George and he goes under the uh, DBA of Keg Knives. Uh, and that's going to stand for uh, K for Kenneth, E for Elizabeth, which is his artist wife, and uh, G for George. So you kind of put all that together. Now, I've had this knife, as I mentioned, for over a year. And back when I got it, uh, the company name was Infinity Knives. And he has recently changed that. And I don't want to confuse you when I bring the packaging out and show you how the knife is packaged with the old name on it. Uh, because everything is different right now. And I'll put the link down below in the description to his website so you can take a look and see what he's doing. Right now he's only doing one model and in a variety of different finishes. This one is his carbon finish which is a really really interesting finish. It's almost like a parkerized finish. Um, it, it feels quite a bit smoother. It's a specialized bake coating um, that he basically he does all the work, does all the heat treat, and then he goes back and does this coating with his furnace to create this look. It's a really interesting finish, and it seems to be really durable. It hasn't shown a single mark, and you can, I don't know if you can really see anything on the edge of the blade, but the knife has been used. But there are no marks on the finish of the blade, and I'm pretty amazed by that. It's actually, uh, <laughs> it's actually a damn cool finish. And it's meant to be more of a random, uh, not a completely uniform finish, like, say, black Cerakote, for example. Uh, it's a, so every knife will be a little bit different. And the inlays of the knife are yellow box elder burl inlays. Really nicely done. Great finish on them. They feel great. What an integral knife is, is the knife itself, aside from inlays, is completely made out of one piece of steel. There is no separate piece of steel for a guard or uh, anything else. It's all going to be crafted from one piece of steel. So you don't have the handle in one material and the blade in another. There is no separation. There is no adjoining of, of different pieces. It is one solid piece of steel. This happens to be D2 steel. Uh, but Kenneth has told me that uh, he's happy to work with pretty much any any premium steel that somebody wants, he will work with. This was one of the first knives that he did, and he was kind of testing the waters with it. And it, I, I think that in his mind, he didn't want to go out there and go, you know, balls to the wall with really crazy expensive steel in case maybe for some reason the knife wasn't as, uh, you know, well accepted as he would have liked. Then he would have had a huge investment out there in all that steel. So he did these in D2. Now, as you see, because it's not really all that difficult to take care of your stuff, uh, even having this for over a year and having a little bit of use on it, uh, there's no rust, there's no corrosion, there's no issues with the edge or anything like that. D2 is a fine steel. It's a tool steel that's been used by a lot of knife makers. Uh, but he does recognize that if somebody uh, has specific needs and wants something different than D2, he's happy to offer that. You're looking at eight and a quarter inches in overall length with a four and a quarter inch blade. Weight is about seven ounces. Now, you can consider that heavy or you can consider that light. And it, it, for the size of knife that it is, it's a little bit heavy. But because the fact that it is milled from one solid block of steel, this whole knife is steel with just small thin inlays, it's actually very, very lightweight for what it is. So it uh, depends on your viewpoint. It does come with a leather sheath. Unfortunately, it's a drop sheath. I'm the kind of person, I, I, I'm not a... I'm not very old school. 
I know there's a lot of guys out there that like a drop leg sheath. That's great. That's fantastic. Um, it's just not me. I'm wearing a pair of jeans and a t-shirt. I don't want a knife sticking out. So all of the sheaths that I have made for me are horizontal carry where it's in line with the belt. So, you know, you're drawing it out this way, not this way. Uh, so it could be easily concealed. Nobody knows you have it. Uh, that's just the way that I am. But I know there's a lot of people that, that still like that traditional style of carry. And that's the style of sheet that he offers. And I'll show that to you here in a few minutes. Let's give you some nice close-ups while we continue to talk. Look at that finish. Look how cool that is. I really do dig this. Now, he does a number of different finishes. You want something fancier, he can do that. You want something even grittier and grungier, he can do that as well. Uh, and I like the flexibility that he offers with the finishes that he's doing. Now, the only trick is there are only 50 of these that will ever be made. Now, I don't know how many have been made and sold in the past year. I mean, look at, look at the bevels here. I'm sorry, I just have to stop myself. Uh, when I see workmanship like that, it really, it really jumps out at me. It's beautifully done. It's a very subtle thing, but it's very, very cool. Anyway, uh, only 50 were to have been made. I don't, uh, I don't know how many are left or if he's still making them any longer. I do notice that he has one particular version on his website currently, so at least that's a good sign. Now, the inspiration for the design, some of you that uh, may recognize this knife that are really, really into fixed blades, uh, there is a, uh, a knife maker who goes by the name of Carl Heinz Kub, and he's actually a big influencer uh, of Kenneth, and he admires him and looks up to him, and he emulated one of Mr. Kub's designs by creating this, but he did this with permission uh, and the, the only part of the agreement that he has to really uphold in, in any way is the fact that he can't sell these in Germany. That's it. So if you're watching right now from Germany, um, you have to buy uh, Karl Kub's knife. You can't buy this one. But every, every place else in the world, you can buy this. And I thought that was really interesting to, to go out there with your very first knife, your very first design, and base it off of someone who had inspired you to get into knife making to begin with. So it's kind of a cool homage. And again, if he, if he had not done that with permission, we'd be having an entirely different discussion in this video. Uh, but he did get permission, and, and so it is a, definitely an homage to the talent uh, and, and the design work that was being done there. Now, Kenneth works alongside his wife, Elizabeth, who is a talented artist, and she inspires him in the work that he does as well. He is a tool and die journeyman, he's a 3D modeler, CNC programmer, and hard milling specialist. So he's used to working uh, with machines, he's used to working with steel and metals and doing um, intricate design work. And I think it really, while this comes off as a fairly simplified knife, if you're just looking at it at face value, I really want you to dive in. And I want you to look at some of the, the more interesting parts. Number one, the fact that this is made as an integral. That is a big, big, big deal. Uh, I showed you one of the points that jumped out at me here, which were these micro bevels uh, that run across the spine of the blade. But also notice that the tang is tapered, very nicely tapered. Something else that you wouldn't expect from someone doing their very first knife. I think that's really, really cool. Now, I don't want to say this is very first knife. It's this very first publicly available model. I should probably specify that. Because he's made knives for friends and family and for other occasions. Uh, but as far as a publicly available design, this was the first one. And uh, I think it's marked right here. Yep. 1601. Uh, 16 signifies it was made in 2016, 01 being the first design of that year, and 049, I believe that's what that says, I have a hard time seeing through my monitor, yep, 049, um, is the designation for this particular combination of the uh, carbon finish with the box elder burl inlays. Everything is cleaned up very, very nicely. Uh, if you get down in here where the finger grooves are, it feels really, really nice. And a lot of people I know don't like very specific finger grooves because it's telling you to where, where to put your fingers. However, most of the times that people don't like that is when there's small and restrictive grooves. 
these are very very large as you see they drop right into my fingers very nicely there's a, an oversized choil here which will serve well for choking up on the blade also making it easier to resharpen oh excuse me had a little hiccup trying to sneak up on me there and a very large thumb depression right down here in the spine of the blade which is going to make it very very stable when you are doing any kind of hard cutting tasks and the fact that it's an integral it's not just about oh look I can make an integral knife and that really is a big 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 deal you'll notice there are very few knife makers when you look at the thousands and thousands of knife makers out there very few that actually make integrals so yes there is certainly there are certainly bragging rights that go along with it but there's a practicality because this is now a stronger knife there is no joint there is no union there is nothing to become disrupted or, or weakened it is one solid bar of D2 tool steel so that means it's going to be super tough super strong and there's very little that you're ever going to do that you could actually hurt it I love the fact that it's slim I think a lot of people would have been very tempted to use a much much thicker blade stock and and keep it much thicker especially in the handle instead he did it in a way that's practical and comfortable and because it's slimmer that also means it's easier to carry so there it is guys I wanted to get it out there there's not much I can really say because it's a fixed blade there are no moving parts there's nothing else going on there um, but I did want to make sure I got a chance to show this to you in full HD quality so that you could see the level of workmanship that Kenneth is putting out I'm very impressed um, I look forward to uh, seeing more designs that he's doing in the future I know that he's currently working on a, a ball bearing flipper he was going to introduce it this past year at the Blade Show, Blade 2017. And I apologize, I've got a couple little dings and marks on it from carrying it. I just, you know what, I've had this knife for over a year, and I had not noticed his logo there. How cool is that? Nice laser engraved logo. Anyway, um, he was going to debut that flipper at Blade 2017. Uh, he and I talked about it a little bit, and he decided to kind of hold off a little bit and wait to, to put it out there. And I believe by the time Blade 18 comes around, you should be able to see that. Hopefully sooner. I want to see what he's done. I have not seen the design. I have no idea what it looks like. Um, he described a little bit of it to me, and it sounded really, really cool. And I'm excited to see what somebody with this level of talent can do when it's applied to a folder. And listen folder the folder market is the biggest that's if, if you're gonna make knives at some point you have to make the jump into folders I'm doing the same thing myself I mean I'm I've been making fixed blades now for almost a year and I'm very very happy with them and uh, love my customers but I've got to broaden that uh, that customer base I got bills to pay so the way to do that is to go into making a folder because you'll have more opportunities for sales so higher sales volume is a good thing and I'm excited to see uh, how he translates his workmanship that's so clean and so precise here into the folder market. And I really hope to see this finish in a folder because for those of us that do carry and use a folder, um, having a really tough finish that's going to help resist corrosion and it's also going to mask some of the wear marks, that's pretty damn cool. And I'm impressed by it. So there you have it, guys. That is a, a not-so-quick look, but a fairly quick look for me uh, at this beautiful integral fixed blade from Keg Knives. Well, hell, I almost forgot to show you the packaging that I promised to show you. So here it is. Uh, again, uh, ignore the fact that it says Infinity Knives. That was the old business name. So it's a, it's a pretty basic cardboard box, but I love the way that the overall presentation was done. There you have your knife. Uh, laser cut, I'm assuming laser, but cut into the foam. Here's the sheath. Now, like I mentioned, I'm not a huge fan of a drop style sheath because I don't want it coming out from underneath my shirt. I like it to be a bit more concealed, so I've actually never used that. I had a custom sheath made for it um, that I absolutely love. And one of the interesting things is he actually marks the inside of the lid there 
shows you a picture of the knife model that he's doing. Uh, again, please ignore the uh, information here that no longer applies to the new business name. But I thought it was a really nice presentation overall. Nice and clean and slick. And there you have it.